Welcome back to the fifth episode. As you can see, I'm away on holiday. I'm currently in Cyprus for the week, or 10 days actually. So property investing is not going to be as active as it normally would be. However, I will use this time to answer some of the most common questions which I've been asked recently. Now, if you're wondering where my family are, they're on that boat over there, that pirate ship. I can't actually go on it because I get really bad seasick, which is a pain. So I thought I'd get a bit of work done, shoot a video, might even enjoy a bit of peaceful time away from the kids. Now the seven bar to let going through really smoothly now. The searches have been done, the solicitor's on top of things, so hopefully it shouldn't take too long before that one's complete and we can get a tenant in. I'll make sure I do a video to show you around, I'll show you what improvements I'll make to the house. I'll also go through a process of how I actually find tenants. I'll also show you a step-by-step -step from when you get the keys to when you sign the tenancy agreement and your tenant moves in. Now, people have been asking me questions recently. Now, by far, the single most asked question that I get asked is, how do you fund your properties? So I'll go through some of the ways here now because funding properties is different for different people. So when it comes to funding property, it is different for everybody. Now, for me, the way I'm going to fund my eighth property is one of two ways. The first one is I'm currently saving up all the rental incomes from the other properties, which will quickly build up a pot and give me enough for deposit for the eighth, which is great. And obviously it's great for investors that have already got a portfolio. However, for you, for instance, you may only have one or two, or you might not have not even started your property journey yet. Therefore, you can't save up your rental profits from your previous properties. Now, the second way in which I might fund my next property, depending what kind of property it is, is through a bridging loan. Now, one of the benefits to owning multiple properties is, when it comes to getting bridging loans, you can actually get a loan for the full amount of the purchase price because they use your other properties as collateral. Whereas if you went and got a bridging loan and you don't have any assets behind you, you would only able to fund around 70 to 75% of the cost of the property. Whereas because I've got multiple properties, I can actually get 100% or even more, which I can then use to buy a property, refurb the property, and then refinance or sell the property in the future to pull out the profit. So depending on the strategy I use next, they will be my two options for funding my eighth property. Now, I do totally understand that that's not feasible for everybody. Now, if you're in the position where you have zero to three properties, then your strategy is gonna be completely different. So let's say you're just starting out or you only have one buy to let. This is the period that I call the grafting period because you're gonna to have to work really hard. You're gonna to have to save money or you're gonna to have to earn extra money to raise enough to get a deposit on your buy to let. Also, I call it the grafting period because the best strategy in which you can use on your first three properties is a BRRR strategy where you buy a property, you renovate it and then you refinance and then rent it out or you could even sell the property for a profit. So your first three properties, you're gonna to have to pull your finger out, you're gonna to have to work hard, you're gonna to have to save, you're gonna to have to graft. Then once you've got three or four properties under your belt, the process of funding further properties becomes easier because you've got cash flow, you've got money coming in all of the time, which you can then easily save to put towards your next property. So depending where you currently are, I would say it's different. Don't just think there's only one way of funding property. Don't think it's easy or don't think it's difficult. There's a lot of people out there that say you can get investors, you can get funding from other people, which is great. However, if you're on your first three or four properties, then the chances are an investor isn't really gonna trust you with their money. So this is why you have to put in the hard work yourself at the beginning. And this applies to everything in life. It's not just property. If you're starting a business, if you're doing a new course, you're learning something, then the initial stages are always going to be the hardest. If you are just starting out, then make sure you please stick around because I'm going to be showing you something that nobody actually does. Something to do with J9 property. Make sure you stick around, make sure you subscribe to the Instagram channel because I'm actually going to be showing people how to 
can make the money, how to raise the funds before buying their first buy to -like property. And this is something that nobody else does in the property industry. Everybody talks about getting into property. Everybody talks about raising finance from investors, using other people's money, saving money. But nobody ever actually talks about how to earn your own money as a, from a side hustle or from a separate business. I'm going to be doing that. I'm going to be showing you how to do it. Now, this is something I'm going to be doing. It's something that I'm currently working on. If you're into property or you want to get into property, then this is going to be an amazing opportunity. Keep watching the videos. Make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you follow me on Instagram and I keep you updated on how that progresses. Now, if you only get into property just for the purpose of getting a couple more holidays per year, then it's definitely worth it to just look at this. Only just four properties that allow you to do this at least a couple of times per year. I'm not just saying it because this channel is about property. Property is the best investment that you can make, without doubt. Now, I know that there are people in here for things to say. When the market does crash or when the house prices drop, I know this is going to happen. It's inevitable. However, it doesn't mean I'm not going to invest in property now or in the future. Everybody's goal is to improve their lives. So if you can improve your life by even a tiny, tiny bit, or even if you can just get one extra holiday per year or even one holiday per year if you don't currently have any then for me it's definitely worth it it's definitely worth the hard work and it's also definitely a great way of setting yourself up for the future i'm back in the uk now back to reality unfortunately so time to crack on with a property journey I've just got off the phone to an estate agent. Um, yesterday I was looking through right move and I found a property that had just come on the market and it happened to be a property that is next door to another house that I own. So obviously that immediately caught my attention. So I've just called the estate agent and I've got a viewing boot for tomorrow. Um, there is a tenant currently in there and I've just found out that the tenant is happy to stay on. However, the rent they're paying is a little low at the minute. I would have to increase that by at least a hundred pounds per month. Therefore, I'm going to view the property, I'm going to speak to the tenant, I'm going to ask them if there's any issues or problems that they feel that need sorting with the house. I'm going to explain the situation that regardless if I buy the house or somebody else buys the house, that the rent's going to have to go up in line with everything else. Hopefully I'll try to get a bit of footage from the viewing to show you around. If not, um, the estate agent website does have some good images, some video footage, so I will be able to show you that. But all in all, this will be a great addition to the portfolio. Now, I've not even completed on the seventh buy to let yet, and I'm already looking for the eighth. Now, I didn't set out to go and look for another property this quickly before the other one had complete. However, when properties come up, then you've just got to seize the opportunity. You've just got to go for it. If you've got the mindset to build your portfolio, then don't let things get in your way. Obviously, this one might be a little tougher, might have to push through a few barriers to get the mortgage accepted when I've already got one going through. Um, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. It's only a problem. It's just how you deal with it. Some people are put off by problems, whereas other people just like to solve them. For me, I like to solve problems because when you solve a problem, you are advancing, you are getting to your goal, you are moving forward in life. So it's always good to solve problems. Now talking about problems, um, I've just received this through the post from my solicitor. It's the energy performance certificate for the property that I'm currently buying. Now, current rating is really low. It's an E, probably the lower end of an E. Um, but as you probably heard, that the government are bringing this new policy where the EPC rating needs to be increased to at least a C. Now, this is going to cause a lot of problems. It's going to cause a lot of issues with landlords, especially landlords like myself who own properties that are quite old like I own a lot of two bed terraced houses which are around 100 years old obviously the insulation's poor well there isn't any insulation um the EPC ratings are low and to be honest it's not actually possible to get them up to a C so I'm not going to let this deter me away from property as I just said it's only a problem whatever you make of that problem it's down to you but for me I'll just take it head on I will tackle the problem and sort it out now if you look at this energy performance certificate Bearing in mind it was done in 2014, so hopefully there is some improvements that have been made since then. If we look through it, it does give you recommendations on how to improve the rating. And the first one is to add internal wall insulation. Now, if you look at the typical cost, which they've estimated, it says it costs between 4,000 and 14,000 pounds, and it'll save you 177 pounds per year. 
and after we've done all this work it'll still be rated E. Okay so we move on to the second one again it's insulation this time it's floor insulation now all the things it mentions is low energy lighting this is pretty basic energy efficient light bulbs or LED lights another one is heating controls room thermostats not such a big issue the other one is to replace the boiler I think the boiler has been replaced but if not um, it'll be a combi boiler although the government are pushing towards these air pumps but again they cost an absolute fortune now all these steps which I've just mentioned only puts it up from an E to a D so we're still nowhere near getting the C rating that's required by the government in the next few years but on the final page to get us from the D to the E it says that we should be installing solar panels really I mean the cost of these solar panels is ridiculous it's only a two bed terraced house I know it will save money for the tenant and I know that it'll be more energy efficient but come on there's got to be some common sense here by the government a very small two bedroom terraced house is using nowhere near as much energy as say a six bedroom mansion with a swimming pool so you shouldn't be comparing the both if a house is really small and not using much energy anyway then why does it have to be as energy efficient as something larger? There are grants in place. There are things in place which can help landlords. I'm not fully clued up on it yet, to be honest. Something that I've got to get my head in and learn, which I will do. Now, I know I've got a number of properties now, so it's not going to be easy trying to get the EPC rating up on all of them. I think there is some kind of ruling where once you've paid £3,000 or £3,500 towards improving the energy of the home, then... If you're still not at that C level or you just basically can't get up to a C, you can actually apply for exemptment. I'm not sure exactly how it works, but this is something I'm going to have to do because a lot of my houses, as I said, are 100 years old. It's extremely difficult, even maybe impossible on some of them to get them up to a C or above. However, I will start working on them. I will start implementing the things that are required to get the EPC rating up. And then when the time comes, I'll cross that bridge whether I have to apply for grants, whether I have to apply for exemption, I don't know. But this is the joys of owning property. It's just another problem I have to solve and I definitely won't be allowing it to stop me achieving my goals. I'll probably do more videos about EPCs in the future, but for now, I'll take it slowly. I will start to improve the properties and if I can't get them to a C, I can't get them to a C. The market rents more 500 to be honest. Yeah, that's what I charge next door. Yeah. I um, mean, next door is, is in a, in, <laughs> in a, a better, better condition yeah. than this one, but um, but yeah, charge um, 500. Yeah, it's about what it's worth. Is the tenant willing to? Well, well she's on a periodic. So you, if I've got to talk to the owner next week because I wanted to issue the section 13 on her, mm -hmm. uh, the notice six weeks ago which is how well it's come to market and um, then to make sure the tenant will have access to it. Right. But I've just, I've just met her, I haven't I have met her, I've just spoken to her, she seems lovely. Yeah. So, oh, very good. Yeah. Well, yeah, she's happy but to all stay. all rents are going up across. Oh, I know, yeah. yeah. but you don't know who you're going to get. No. I want that. And, you know, from 700 to 825, and they've held it for two years through COVID, I kind of get it. Yeah. But a lot of people, a lot of tenants are under a lot of stress. It's, it, it's a shock to them. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. I mean, we wouldn't put them up unless we absolutely had to. Like, you know, rabbits running in. I know, they are loose. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, we've never had any damp issues in that house, so no. I don't think there's any. No. Uh, I mean, yeah.
just got off the phone to the estate agent regarding that viewing that I went to do on Saturday and I have put an offer in of 84,000 it is a good price the property is on the market is a good price however the tenants only paying 395 pounds per month so I did state that for it to be possible for the numbers to work the rent would have to go up to 500 or 500 plus now I know this is achievable because I own the house next door and the tenant pays 500 a month so it's definitely achievable they also said that somebody else has put an offer in however they want the property vacant so obviously to buy the property vacant they're gonna to have to evict the tenant that's in at the minute so maybe the vendor will accept my offer which is lower because I want the tenant to stay now the estate agent have told the tenant that they were likely to put the rent up to 450 or 465 anything higher would push the tenant out now it's not just me that wants to put the rent up anybody that buys that property will have to put the rent up quite a lot so I'm just gonna to have to see how that goes play it by ear now some other things I've got good on at the minute the first property that I ever purchased had quite a few damp issues last year and I found that the roof had no fault basically it needs repairing so um, the roofers are currently working on that as we speak I think the job should be finished tomorrow we've had all the fault and the last we've had the chimney repointed so hopefully that'll sort that out now as I always talk about I want this channel to be transparent I want people to be aware of pros and cons of property and having this roof repaired has cost me over three thousand pounds it could be close to four thousand pounds depending on what other work is going on so yeah it's just one of those things that can't be avoided really if you buy an asset and you want to keep it for life then you're gonna to have to stay on top of the repairs you're gonna to have to stay on top of the maintenance unfortunately repairing the roof is one of the biggest costs that you will encounter as a landlord but it will pay off in the long term now that I know that it's all done I know that it's watertight it's waterproof I shouldn't have any more damp problems going forward now another thing I want to touch on is I know that a lot of people make out their best in properties brilliant I mean, I'm one of them don't get me wrong however it's not always easy I've currently got a mortgage application going through at the minute um, for my seventh buy to let however the mortgage lender has just been a pain in the arse they're asking ridiculous questions they are questioning everything I'm having to jump through hoops I don't know why because I have the deposit there it's all ready obviously I have a good income I've got other properties which produce a good income so I don't know why the lenders are being so picky at the minute. So if you are in the process of buying an investment property, don't reverse your car, mate. So if you are in the process of buying an investment property, then just be aware that some of the lenders are being very strict at the minute. Also, this will probably have an effect if I applied for a new mortgage at the minute, if I went and if my offer on this eighth property is accepted and have to go through the process of applying for another buy to let mortgage, could hinder my chances interest rates are going up another thing is that not just mine everybody's profits are being squeezed so I've got mortgages coming up to the end of their term that need remortgaging and obviously the rates are higher than they were a year ago or two years ago so for example one of my properties the current mortgage is 190 pounds per month that's now going up to 225 per month However, I don't feel like I'm in a situation or a position where I can put the tenant's rent up by 35, 45 pounds in one hit. Obviously, it's going to be really difficult for a lot of tenants. It's not just their rental that's going to go up. Obviously, they've got their utility bills, their gas and electric. So it is going to be a difficult 12 months or two years. Just arrived at the gym, so I think it's time to call an end to this vlog. Um, I really appreciate that you've watched to the end. As I said at the beginning, Lots of exciting things coming up, especially with J9 Property. So make sure you subscribe, make sure you stay around and follow me on Instagram because I'm going to be releasing more details on this very soon. Thanks again and I'll catch you next week.